Today we begin with the breath prayer and I'll start with a short devotion and then teach you that prayer. I invite you first to hear these words from John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23. This was right after Jesus was resurrected and the disciples are gathered together. It was still the first day of the week, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and he said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you are forgiven, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whenever I hear a scripture passage on the breath of God or the Holy Spirit, my heart is moved. I'm often reminded of this phrase that gives me comfort that God is as close to us as our breath. In the story of creation in Genesis chapter 2, when God creates Adam, he takes dirt, earth, and creates Adam into a human, into body, skin, bones. But Adam doesn't become fully alive until God breathes the breath of life onto him. Then Adam becomes who God has called him to be and is able to live and breathe and move. And that's the same for us. God breathes this creative spirit into us. We become co-creators with God as we are able to help bring about the kingdom of God as earth as it is in heaven. And this creative breath inspires us to imagine what we can do for God's kingdom. It gives us a God-sized imagination. I wonder though if maybe during the pandemic you felt like your creative breath has been stifled. That maybe you aren't sure about where God is calling you or how you can live out the ministry that you felt called to you because of this pandemic. Yet I invite you to think that maybe there's something new going on. Maybe God is calling us to imagine ministry in new ways as individuals, as Valonia United Methodist, and even as the Church Universal. One day I was at a sermon workshop a few years ago and the preaching professor that was there to lead us asked us to dig around in the bags or the things we had brought with us that day to find a faith object. I always have a big work bag with me and so I dug around in my bag looking for something to share at my table and I pulled out my inhaler and then she asked us to think of a sermon illustration and I wasn't quite sure what I would say. And then it hit me. My inhaler offers me sustenance. It gives me literally the breath of life when I am about to exercise or when my asthma or allergies are acting up. It offers me a way to take a deep breath in. It offers a sustaining breath for me. The disciples in the upper room on the evening we just read about in John 20 are in need of the same sustenance. They're scared, afraid, locked in a room, feeling alone. Just like many of us have been feeling in the midst of this pandemic. They aren't sure what to do next. And right as they are unsure of what to do, Jesus shows up. They think that their Savior has died on a cross and now has been taken from the tomb by someone. But instead, in this moment, he appears. And he offers them sustaining breath. He breathes the Holy Spirit upon them. So maybe you're in need of this sustaining breath. Maybe you need to remember that the Holy Spirit is with you, that God has not left you in this time. Whether it's the creative breath you're in need of and you want to imagine new things or this sustaining breath, this reminder of God's everlasting grace, might you pay attention to your breath a little more fully this day. And might you trust God's grace is with you. Amen. At this time, I want to take a moment to teach you about the breath prayer. It's a prayer that's been done for centuries, especially in monastic communities. And it's called the breath prayer because you pray on the inhale and exhale of your natural breathing rhythm. Or maybe you might pronounce your inhale and exhale a little more. As you do that, as you inhale, you're invited to think of a name for or phrase that you call God. Maybe it's creator God or living savior or healing spirit. 
Whatever phrase you like to pray, naming God, you will think on the inhale of every breath. And then as you exhale, you're invited to say a short request or need that you have, just two or three words. It might be guide me or give me strength, help me, love me. And so if my phrase were healing spirit, give me strength. As I sat down to pray, I might, I'll inhale and think healing spirit. And then I'll exhale and say, give me strength. And I'll just do that over and over again. You can do that just for a few minutes, maybe setting a timer as you get in the practice, or you can just sit down and feel out how long you want to pray that prayer. This is a great prayer to do while you're doing dishes or driving to work, or even as your family is getting ready for bed at night. I invite you to try this practice sometime this week. Might and if you have a breath prayer that you've prayed before or one you create during this time, we'd love for you to share it in the comment section and let us know what that prayer is for you. At this time, I thank you for joining us and I invite you to join me in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks that you are the breath of life, a sustaining breath that keeps us going when we are worried or sad or burdened. Might you give us your peace, just as Jesus promises to the disciples that day that he appears to them. And might you energize us for new things, giving us hope that you are our creator. Amen.